Hi, I'm Derek Sando, the Nature Conservation Coordinator for the Department of Parks and Wildlife here in Exmouth. One of our most important roles here for terrestrial nature conservation is to manage invasive predators. Unfortunately, on the Northwest Cape, we have lost over 80% of our small mammal fauna since European settlement. Primarily foxes and feral cats, as along with a few other things like inappropriate fire regimes and habitat loss, have been the most significant factor affecting the loss of these species. Feral cats in particular are amazing predators. Their ability to stalk prey and find prey is unsurpassed and they manage to occupy all types of habitats across Australia including all habitat types on the Northwest Cape. Foxes likewise are amazing predators and their ability to target particular species and have great impacts on those species such as the iconic black flanked rock wallaby or even species that you might not consider to be a threat like nesting sea turtles. Foxes have a great ability to smell out turtle nests and to target turtle hatchlings when they're returning from to the shore. We undertake a number of different management options here in Cape Range National Park to try and control these predators. 1080 baiting is one of the most efficient broad scale methods of controlling these predators. Fortunately here in Australia and in particular in Western Australia uh, we have the ability to use a toxin that is poisonous to introduce species but due to the fact that the 1080 compound is found in naturally occurring plants particularly in in southwestern Western Australia but also in other parts of Australia most native species have developed a tolerance over thousands and thousands of years so the toxin is relatively safe for native species but highly poisonous to introduced species such as the feral cat and the fox and rabbits as well. Our broad scale aerial baiting program has been running with the assistance of the Western Shield program since 1996 here in Cape Range and since that time there's been a wonderful knockdown of foxes that has really assisted the black flank rock wallaby population in thriving here in Cape Range. Unfortunately feral cats are much more difficult uh, to, to control than foxes and this is primarily due to the fact that they much prefer live prey and, and are not as much of a scavenger as, as the fox is so you really need to uh, aim your baiting programs uh, when cats are most likely to be hungry and if there's an abundance of live prey around making baits available and attractive to feral cats can be quite difficult um, but that's something that we're trialling here in Cape Range since 2014 we've introduce the Eradicat bait to our aerial baiting program which is a bait that's been designed to be attractive and palatable to feral cats but is also attractive and, and highly toxic to foxes as well so since we've introduced this bait the fox population has decre decreased dramatically and our monitoring programs indicate that uh, foxes are at extremely low numbers in the park at the moment Unfortunately this does create an opportunity for feral cats to thrive in an environment where there's a lack of competition from foxes. So the challenge for us going forward is to develop a baiting regime that is as effective on feral cats as it is for foxes. But we also do targeted trapping as well to try and overcome these problems. The black flank rock wallaby is a threatened species here in Australia. 
It's found in a number of different sites across the country, including Western Australia and South Australia, the Northern Territory. But there's only a few places where it still has a stronghold, and Cape Range is one of those strongholds. The highly dissective karstic ranges of Cape Range provide ample refuges for the rock wallabies and the plant species that they need for food are also in abundance here so it's an ideal place for rock wallabies to survive and flourish. Unfortunately along with introduced predators such as the fox and feral cats they also have to compete for these resources with feral goats who are also a big problem. Feral goats are much larger and they're an extremely agile and remarkably adapted creature to survive in arid, in arid environments such as Cape Range. They can get into similar habitats that the rock wallaby uses and they're voracious feeders as well so they can quite easily outcompete rock wallabies for the limited resources that we have particularly when conditions are dry and so here in Cape Range National Park we undertake targeted feral goat control to try and remove the feral goat from the black flank rock wallabies habitat. We've been extremely successful in our feral goat control program since we introduced aerial shooting now we have very few goats that remain in the park although reinvasion is inevitable so it's important that we monitor their populations and undertake control when needed to keep the impact slow rock wallabies have been doing extremely well we've had good conditions over the last few years and with our introduced predator control and feral goat control rock wallabies are being seen in new gorges and new spots on both the west side and the east side and they appear to be increasing in numbers they are even occupying sites that we wouldn't necessarily consider to be optimum habitat but that's a sign that they're doing really well if they can survive in suboptimal habitat. Our monitoring programs include a range of new technologies now so that we can monitor what invasive predators are doing, what threatened species are doing, and so we use technologies such as remote sensor cameras. Radio tracking collars provide much needed information on their habitat needs and their behaviour. Thanks very much for your time today. I hope you enjoy Cape Range National Park as much as I do.